Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Maria, for the invitation. And thanks everyone for joining, for tuning in. So we'll spend uh, 45 minutes, Maria, 45 minutes, right? Um, right, yep. Cool. So 45 minutes talking about uh, Metaspace, what is Metaspace, how to use it. And uh, so I'll keep it interactive. And uh, so links and uh, live demo and so on. So I don't see your, your questions. So please type them in the screen or, or in the chat box or I'll leave plenty of time for discussion at the end. Okay, let me start. My name is Theodore. I work at European Molecular Biology Laboratory, EMBL. And today I will present the work which was done by a, a but in particular by the current Metaspace team, which includes Lachlan Stewart, Sergey Mamedov, and Lucas Maciel. And, um, and if you slides, please go to metaspace2020.eu and a bunch of information, but in particular a link to this exact. I'm sorry, um, Tadur, right, so sorry, your voice sometimes actually cuts out. Really? If you, if you can oh. do something about that. Yes, that's unfortunate. Um, wait a little bit. And we can definitely do something about it. Okay. I either dis disappear now or we'll get better. We'll see. <laughs> oh, right. Maria, how is it looking now? So far, good. So let's okay. Good. So then, so it was it was getting better option and not completely disappear option. <laughs> uh, cool. So let me continue. What is Metaspace? So if again, so it's all on the website. If you go to uh, here, if you go to Metaspace twenty twenty dot eu, you'll see that Metaspace is a platform for metabolite annotation of imaging mass spectrometry data. So we are in lipid map spring school. So here on the metabolites, we also think about lipids as metabolites as well. And we'll actually see that metaspace sometimes and often produces small lipids than small molecules in this respect. Um, okay, so this is, it can do metabolite annotation. It also, what's very important, you have access to a lot, a lot of public data sets which are contributed by others. And this is what we call knowledge base. And um, what's very important, um, Metaspace is open access and it's also free for everyone. We were very fortunate over the past years to, to be funded by European Com Commission, by National Institute of Health. And uh, we, we, we definitely acknowledge all this, all this funding. Again, European uh, uh, Union Horizon 2020 program, National Institute of Health and IGDK and NH LBI as well, and some other funding from, from industry and also from, from other sources. So this is the concise information, what is Metaspace? But let me go back to the slides and walk you a bit slower because we have a bit more time um, to introduce um, a few other aspects. So first of all, as I said, Metaspace is developed currently by these three software engineers and data scientists, Lachlan, Sergey and Lucas, but there was a number of people who con contributed in the past, Vitaly and other software developers, but also there is a lot of science and scientific methods and, and, and also testing and applications which are contributed uh, to Metaspace by the rest of uh, Alexander's team at Temple. So um, I know that yesterday you already had uh, uh, talks about imaging mass spectrometry, uh, I, I've seen one by, by Zoltan. So I will not focus too much. I'll just focus on the aspects which are specific to this, talks, uh, to this talk. So again, imaging mass spectrometry, here I'm showing you MALDI imaging mass spectrometry, which is based on, on the laser, where we shine laser at a pixel or small part of the tissue or other sample. And from here, we get mass spectrum on MS1 level, which represent abundances isotopic patterns and other properties of the molecules. And, uh, but um, there are also other types. And again, Zoltan yesterday uh, presented on DESI imaging mass spectrometry. 
Gary Suzdak pre didn't present yesterday on imaging, but uh, his team has developed another type of imaging mass spectrometry called NIMS. So there is a, a lot of different flavors. And um, what, um, what's definitely key is how, uh, the key question is how to extract the molecules and how to find these molecules. But before we go there, so um, let's focus on what, what is the state of the art in terms of spatial resolution and uh, the best, the best image mass spec can get by down to five micrometer pixel size commercial. What's very important that actually a lot of molecules, but also the generated data is pretty big. So from one to 100 gigabytes, uh, per data set, we've seen examples of half a, half a terabyte. What's very important is that imaging mass spectrometry became the major technology for spatial metabolomics and in our context, lipidomics as well. So uh, over the past years, we, we have developed a number of tools for computational analysis and visualization, statistical analysis for imaging mass spectrometry. But over the past five years, we have deeply focused on the problem of molecular identification. So I don't need to go uh, into detail uh, uh, here. Why is it important? Why is it necessary for, for this spring school? But if you're interested to see the, the details and maybe read a little bit about specifics of molecular identification and also other problems for imaging mass spectrometry, you can uh, uh, check out um, our recent review here in annual reviews by medical data science last year. So, okay, this brings us to the solution for molecular identification, which is Metaspace. And uh, four years ago, we have developed an algorithm how we can do metabolite and lipid ID or annotation uh, for imaging mass spectrometry. We published it and then we implemented it as user-friendly solution where users can upload their data to the website called metaspace2020.eu. And then they wait a little bit, they receive email, okay, this is processed, check it out, here are your results. And then they can look at these images, they can visualize in a different way, they can do a little bit of data analysis, they can uh, also share this data, they can publish this data in publications. But what's also very important is that from the beginning we asked the users, are you okay to make your data public? And something like a, little, a bit less than 50% said yes, so a lot of data which was submitted to Metaspace, but not only raw data, but also results, they are available there. And this is what we call metabolite imaging knowledge base. And if you just go there, you will be completely overwhelmed with numbers of data sets and variety there, where they are coming from organs, organisms, and so on. Because over the past three years, we had uh, more than 10,000 submissions. And again, around, 5,000 of them are available publicly. So uh, what's really cool is that uh, there is growing popularity. And uh, over the past three years, there were more than 70 publications um, where Metaspace was used or cited. So this is really, really nice uh, for us to see. And again, so we tried to develop it using you know professional software practices and so on, hiring software engineers. So here definitely, we, we greatly appreciate the funding from, in particular, European Commission, uh, several projects, but also National Institute of Health. Before I will go into, um, into aspects, uh, very practical aspects, how to use Metaspace, how to work with it, I want to have one, a little bit theoretical slide, and uh, which focuses on why do we need a particular special engine or solution for annotation, metabolites or lipids in imaging mass spec data. So before we, we start decoding what's in the slides, I want, to, I want to highlight that, first of all, imaging mass spectrometry is predominantly based on MS1 uh, uh, information. It is possible to do MS2, but it, MSMS, but it's, hard, it's not possible to do it in data-dependent manner. So you can, you can validate one particular molecule of interest, but it's it's rarely a starting point. So uh, this is one, there is definitely now a very interesting development with eye mobility separation, but they did, still didn't come to, to the mainstream. So this is one problem. There is a second problem. So in uh, imaging mass spectrometry, we do not have separation, again, besides in eye mobility uh, separation, which is again, not a mainstream. Uh, 
and uh, not integrate the majority of instrumentation. So that means from a pixel of, which is also a very small material, I mean, pixel can be 10 by 10 micrometer, 10 by 10 by 10 micrometer. From this particular pixel, we get very complex information from the whole metabolome lipidome, which is in this pixel. We don't have separation. And on top of this, we also do not have an SMS for additional uh, uh, um, assigning additional confidence based on fragmentation information. So pretty challenging problem. And at the same time, the data is pretty big. Again, as, as I said, 100 gigabytes data set, it's not, uh, um, it, it's pretty routine right now. So uh, quite often what is, what is being done is just taking a molecule of interest, taking an M over Z of say the most common uh, ion, say M plus H, and looking into the image of the M plus H ion of molecule of interest and taking this as a, as the distribution of molecular interest. But we have shown again and again, and we published uh, in particular in HMF 2017, that this is a very dangerous way, not only because you miss additional adducts which can be generated, and you have more, normally more adducts generated than imaging because th there is definitely availability of salts um, to form uh, potassium, sodium adducts and so on. But also, so even if we found this C image, which represent M plus H or a molecule of interest, it can be an image of another molecule, either as a double lock or another adduct or in source fragment from another molecule. So it means even if I, when I do targeted analysis and targeted visualization of for an ion of interest, I need to account for all this potential uh, uh, trees of ion generation where the molecule goes through in-source fragments, different adducts, ice double ops, and so on and so forth. And I need to account that all this complexity exists in one pixel. So uh, pretty challenging. I need to definitely screen for a lot of molecules. And there is lots of data which cannot be annotated still as in conventional analysis. OK, this brings me to, to Metaspace as a solution. And let me put this one slide as a summary of um, very concise, see why Metaspace can, can, can be used. And this is definitely, it's not only a scientific explanation, it's, it's uh, uh, preaching also to the audience about the, 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 the user friendliness and uh, it's very easy to use, very fast because it works on the cloud. What's very important, it, uh, it is the, currently the only solution in imaging mass spectrometry where we have controlled confidence in the, in the way of so-called false discovery rate calculation. So this was one, a know-how uh, back then. Right now, uh, FDR is also introduced in other fields in, in bulk metabolomics uh, and lipidomics in this way as well. And uh, this is very, very useful too. So uh, what's also, since all the data is stored on the cloud using high-performance computing and high-performance access, data access system, you can get access to millions of metabolite images and lipid images within milliseconds. So this is definitely very powerful for browsing not only your data, but also data from others. And since, again, all data is in the cloud, so you can very easily share data between lab members, you can send hyperlinks, you can uh, share it with collaborators, you can reduce the access, you can make private, public projects, and, and so on. And recently, we also introduced the, the scenario how you can publish the data with Metaspace, similar to other, other platforms or repositories, where you basically you, you create the project, you freeze it, you send the link, special link to reviewers, and afterwards, you can publish it, and your data will be will uh, uh, will have a special URL that you can include in, into into your paper. So yeah, we are working in kind of like so that this will be not only engine, but it's very user friendly uh, and reliable platform for for persistent use and publications of the data. Again, as I said, um, a number of people use it around 100 scientists registered, which is pretty good coverage for our emerging community. Lots of data sets. We know how to process and reprocess it. And again, I'm very, very happy that there is a number of publications. If you are interested, now I'll be slipping into, into the demo. So a lot of this information is actually available there. So on the, on the website. So let me now switch the gears, go back to, to the Metaspace. Um, uh, platform website and uh, if you are interested in all this information so this is basically all you need you have questions you can go to help 
you have you are interested about publications see who actually used it and which way you scroll down and there are all these links here so there is uh privacy we definitely put a lot of effort to uh, to the privacy we disclose what we use and uh, there are also terms this is very important we'll come back to this once again so we define what is service and the main thing we define that the data ownership that the data submitted to metaspace and the results produced by metaspace they belong to the submitter so um this is definitely very important and uh, then you can click at the publications and then you will see the number of publications here our publications which is kind of sort of introduction into this topic but then also research articles which which published used it for a specific uh, analysis and this is nice examples for those who are interested to see how it can be used. Let me switch back to you to the slides because I haven't finished with the introduction yet. Um, straight from the beginning, we put quite some effort to make it free and community oriented. Free means it's free for use, but it's also open source. It's on GitHub on the same page on Metaspace. You scroll down and you will see all the source code and everything about this. It also can be used through the web app, but also through API. If you are, if you're using python for example uh, you, you can use it in jupyter notebooks or you can create your own software and programmatically submit data sets to meta space that's all possible and again there is a, a big public knowledge base and there is also license which specifies how it should be done how you if you, you if you're using this public knowledge base you definitely should acknowledge those who uh, uh, who provided this data to you through meta space it's it's their data it's not meta space data. And, uh, and again, so one, uh, once again, so straight from the beginning, we positioned it as metabolomics or metabolite knowledge base, but all we all know that lipids are actually very well detected by imaging mass spectrometry. And often they are easier to detect than small molecules. So this is definitely provides a lot of opportunities for lipid analysis. All right, so uh, let me go, um, okay uh good so, so this was the introduction so what is metaspace so how to access metaspace again very very simple you go to metaspace 2020.eu and this is all you need definitely there is a lot of complexity there and you can start revealing and um and so these are the main links so we can upload the data set if you have one if you're interested to look at the data sets at the images you go to annotations if you want to explore what kind of data sets or maybe from which organ, from which organism or from which technology, you go to list of data sets. You can go also to projects and many of them they're public. These are sort of folders uh, that users create and organize their data into. And, uh, and for most of these uh, uh, links, besides upload, you don't need to be signed in. But if you want to uh, either use it, submit your data, or you want to access some private data, or someone maybe actually edit you to Metaspace because they want to share data with you, you will need to, to sign in here. So, okay. So with this, let me let me do a live demo. So we'll go to metaspace2020.eu. Um, we'll go to the main page. This is normally what you see. Um, I, as you see, I'm, I'm signed in here. So, and this is our group Emblem. So, but what I would like to, to demonstrate today is how can I access some public data set? So I'll go to projects here and I have, there is a bunch of projects there and I have my favorite one for demonstration. And uh, so I can find it with a text search. It's called whole body imaging. I can click at it and I'll get information about the project, what it is. It's data set from whole body sections of rat and mouse as used in drug metabolism pharmacokinetics for drug discovery and development. And we see that there are 11 uh, data sets here. And let me open, uh, for example, this one. If I click at the data set, so now I'm in another view and you see I'm in the annotations view. And what I have here is this is one data set which was annotated against this database with this particular false discovery rate. And um, they, here I have the list of what we call annotations. You can think of this list of ions. 
where I have molecular formula, I have blast addict and the, and the polarity indicated. So here I have image viewer where I have my optical image, which was submitted by the user. I have also ion image again, this way you can see it a bit better, which represents intensities of this particular ion with this particular MLZ within the, within the tissue section. So, and now I can, now I can start going through this data set and, uh, um, and what can I do? I mean, I can definitely can change visualization here. This is basic information. I can, for example, make it a bit uh, more brighter. So the ion image, I can also change it here. So make it a little bit um, more transparent. I can, I can select my favorite, favorite color map, maybe this one. So basic visualization capacities. Long story short. So, and um, I can also uh, see the intensities. I can change the intensity. I can scale them. I can use uh, uh, here, for example, sort of linear. I can use logarithmic scale. I mean, all this basic uh, visualization that uh, we're enjoying using for, uh, um, for publications, but also just to understand what this image represents. Okay, but this is an image. Uh, so, what about the molecule behind? I can click here. And immediately I see a structure and uh, the name of the molecule. So glycerophosphocholine. And uh, so I see the structure and I know that this is coming. Uh, you probably see like a tiny link like over there, left lower corner, which is which brings me if I click, which will open the link to this molecule in HMDB. This is where we, we have taken it from. And uh, you can read more information about the, 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 this particular molecule. And there is some additional information here. So, but immediately you probably notice that there is a warning here. And this is very important and actually unique feature of Metaspace because when we did this annotation, I'll show you later how we did it, but we also found two isobaric ions. Again, so we have different levels of ambiguity in, uh, in, in mass spec on the MS1 level. Oh, on any level, basically. So where you can have isomers, which have exactly the same local formula, not resolved anyhow without additional uh, separation and fragmentation. But there are also isobaric ions, which are slightly different, theoretically different, but mass spec cannot resolve them because either resolution or accuracy is not sufficient. And here, based on the accuracy that and resolution that we used for that instrument, as was specified by the user, we found two ions which are potentially isobaric. And now we can scroll down and see what these ions are. And we'll see that there is M mass of this one, minus 0.0017. Again, we're talking here about high resolution mass spec, so it's still isobaric. So, and um, maybe this one, or maybe this one. That means it not only shows me, okay, this is the molecule, middle space. It also warns me if there is some other molecule, molecules that I should consider. Okay, but this is, uh, this is a bit of level of complexity. Let me show you the simple application. I can click another molecule here, and I see another, uh, definitely visualization for where this molecule is localized. So that means this way, I'm, I'm going through the images, so one by one, and I see where they are localized. And again, if you go now to Metaspace 2020, you'll see exactly the same. So there is additional information that we show here. We show, for example, co-localized annotations or molecules from the same data set. Let me show you. This was a reference one, uh, this one from the top. And this one is another ion, which is localized in pretty much the same areas. I can scroll down and see more of these ions and so on and so forth. So this is what it means, co-localized. What, what, kind of, what kind of other information I can get? I can have a look at other edits because sometimes it's useful for me to know that this molecule, for example, here uh, was detected as plus sodium and plus potassium as well. And see, here I see immediately that they are localized actually in the same areas kind of like increases my confidence um, that this is probably uh, the molecule of interest. Because again, they, this is a completely different M over Z values. But we're using not only M over Z. So in the diagnostics, you can see the information that we use. And um, again, it's it's all in, the, in this tutorial. It's all also in the paper. 
uh, how we do this. And uh, let me now switch on the microscope image, off microscope image, because otherwise it's a bit too much information here. But basically for every ion, we calculate what we call metabolite signal match score. And here the score is 0.96, which is pretty high. It's from zero to one. It's one of the highest. It is calculated as product of three other scores, this raw spatial, raw spectra, and raw chaos. Um, what's important to understand is raw spectra uses isotopic structure. That means we, we predict that we generate the isotopic structure for an ion of interest. Then we go to data, and here you see in blue, you see uh, uh, the theoretical one. And in red, you see the, the predicted one. And uh, for this example, you can appreciate how well the predicted one, or the theoretical isotopic structure, in terms of intensities, how well it matches the theoretical one. This is raw spectral. Raw spatial does similar stuff, but now for images. It looks at all images, uh, here four, or four isotopologues, and, it's, uh, and it calculates how similar they all look. And here it's again, also here, it's pretty high because as you can see here, they, they indeed look very similar. And then the last one is what we call raw chaos. This is a measure of informativeness of this image. If it were like pure, pure noise, pure chaos, then it would be very, very low. But here it calculated it, it, it thinks, yeah, it is informative and it all goes into this MSM. So this is the information that we use, but there is also some additional information that we calculate there is, uh, 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 we use for this analysis. There is also metadata. I can have a look. What is metadata for was provided by users uh, for this data set? It is image mass spec, of course. So it is from mouse. So I know it's from cancer model xenograft. I know how it was prepared. It's fresh frozen using this particular sample preparation. MALDI, FTACR, resolving power, and so on and so forth. And what's important, definitely, who provided this data set publicly, we should definitely all appreciate uh, this sort of contribution to the community. OK, so this was about how can I do basic stuff. Let me show you a little bit more advanced stuff. For example, recently, we have introduced a feature where you can compare localization of different ions between each other. So I'll go here to channels. And uh, this opens this sort of layers, you know, like in Photoshop, uh, layers dialog, where now this ion will be the first layer. So I can also add another one. Let me pick another one, which will be uh, shown with another color. I can also change, make it a little bit brighter here, maybe adjust intensities here and there. And now I see where each of these molecules, this one and this one, are localized. I can add one more. Now this one, because you see it's like very, very similar. So kind of interesting. So um, maybe this one or another one. So that means I can do like basic visualization here analysis. And if at any point of time, I would like to save it for publication, I click here. Pumps, and this will, will save this image um, for publication. What's even more interesting, I can click here, and this will create a special link for, uh, for this exact view, not only the image itself, but really the metaspace view. And if I, if I send this link to someone and this person will open this link in, 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 in their browser, then it will show exactly the same molecule, combinations of molecules, whatever. So it's, it's very, very useful for, for collaboration, for joint work on the data. This is exactly how we use, um, what we use inside, inside our team, but also with collaborators with many others as well. Okay, so this were the basic functionalities. Let me see what I have, what else I have in, in the tutorial. Okay, data requirements. Yep. So what kind of data can I process using Metaspace? So again, if you go to Metaspace, then you will see that, um, uh, let me actually show you. If you go to Metaspace and you go to data sets and you disable all the filters, you'll see a huge number of data sets here. And at this point, I will, I will hide the data sets from, from, from our team. 
so that you'll see you'll see data sets from others so that our, this results will not be saturated. So now I, I've hidden the data sets from our team and you see there is uh, 4,000 public data sets coming not from our team. And I can click at summary and this is actually very interesting for those who are into technology and want to understand the state of the art. So I can see the growth of the number of data sets. It looks linear, but actually there is even, even more pr private data, it's, it's, it's growing faster. Um, I can see who can, who are the major contributors. Pacific Northwest National Library, Imperial College London, University of Texas Health San Antonio, University of Copenhagen, and so on and so forth. So, okay, now we're getting to actually interesting stuff. So this are this is statistics about the use of different sorts uh, or a representation of different types of uh, um, imaging mass spectrometry, different analyzers. Here we see statistics for different organs, different organisms. We see that human actually represents the, the, the most uh, popular or populated organism here. The kidney is the most represented organ because actually there is a big kidney project which contributes a lot of public data here. So, and, uh, and this definitely, the variety of the types of like imaging sources, and the multi matrices and variety of the data sets shows you that the requirements, I mean, we can process almost any data set with a high resolution imaging mass spectrometry. That's why we have Orbitrap and FTSCR represented here. So there is a lot of experiments now going on for other types of imaging mass spec, but officially, and this brings me back to, 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 to the tutorial, officially we support uh, the data sets coming from Orbitrap and FTACR. If you are interested to process either TOF or QTOF, you are very much welcome to give it a go. Um, and if you have any problems, but if you have any problems, then please contact your vendor, in particular for data conversion and for, in particular, how to get your data probably al pro properly aligned and calibrated, because this is the key requirement, in particular for beginner for beginners. So we can relax it for advanced users, but for beginners, you want to have your data aligned and calibrated to be within at least plus minus three ppm. And the resolving power should be at least 70K. So again, we're experimenting with uh, other types of data like QTOF and uh, it works pretty good, but officially not supported. Yet. The data format. So um, for the data format, we accept data from Centroided IMZ email. IMZ email is a main community format. Centroid it is now becoming actually supported by I think all most spec vendors. So if you're interested to, to get instructions, please go to Metaspace or if you you can go to Metaspace slash help or if you will will yeah I'll not go into the else you will find it there. Okay, so now we are we have covered the basics of what Metaspace is and what can be done. And I'm half an hour through uh, this tutorial. So, and I see that there is a bunch of questions. And um, Maria, if you are fine with this, then actually I would probably interrupt it now and I would do a live session with questions. 